Inplik is a Korean illustrator and the artist behind the popular anime Link Click. They draw mostly male anime characters in a manhwa style. The aesthetic colors and shading this artist uses really stand out to me. The illustrations also look very creative and unique. Since this artist is a big inspiration to me, I wanted to learn from them by analyzing their art style. In today's video, I'm sharing my analysis of their art style alongside with what I learned. I first go over how the artist portrays different elements, then I put what I found from analyzing them into practice by drawing my own illustrations. In the end, I'll mention what I learned from studying the artist. Let's start with the breakdown of their art. When I break down artists' work, I like to focus on aspects in the art, how it visually looks, to be able to create art that looks similar using my own workflow. I prefer this over using the exact same steps and layers the artist uses for sketching, line art colors and shading, but it can be very helpful to learn from this as well to improve your own workflow. Inplik also uploaded a speed paint video using Clip Studio Paint on their YouTube channel. I will mention some aspects of what I learned from watching this video, but in case you want to see their full illustration process, you can check out their channel. My breakdown of their art will include how the artist portrays lines, bodies, faces with all the features, hair, clothes, colors, shading, as well as extra effects. Now let's move on to the analysis of their art style. Let's start with how Inplik draws line art. They use very thin lines that sometimes have slight varying line thickness. The chin and jaw to ear transition often have a thicker outline than the jaw, for example. The thickest lines are used for drawing the eyes and mouth, which brings more attention to the character's faces. Overall, Inplik uses rather few lines. They focus a lot on the silhouette and mostly use shading to define folds or hair strands, for example. Most of the lines have a dark brown, rather desaturated color, especially for the character's silhouette and the faces. Some lines are also colored slightly darker than the flat color around them, for example, for their hair, clothes or accessoires. The characters in Plague Draws often have pretty wide necks. They're also pretty tall. The bodies tend to be line heads tall. The anatomy and proportions of the characters are rather realistic, but a bit simplified. The hands also stand out to me, they're pretty realistic, but a bit blocky. The hands are pretty big, similar to the bodies. All of this leads to the characters appearing more adult and masculine. Now we're moving on to the faces. First, let's start with the face shape. Most characters have a rather wider jaw and a slightly rounded pointy chin. Depending on the head angle, the look of the face shape can vary a bit. For frontal angles, the outline is pretty rounded. And for the change of direction from the chin to jaw, which is basically when you look at faces, you often can simplify the lower outline with two lines of direction, which I'm showing here on screen. This change of direction doesn't appear at a clear point because of the overall rounded face shape for frontal head angles, but they are roughly where the outer corners of the eyes are. For three quarter view, which is rather sharp, it is further back than the eye corners, in between where the eye corners and ear would be. You'll also see that at this change of direction, the line art fades. For side profiles, this is also the case. The change of direction point kind of travels further away from eye corners to ears, the more turned the face is. For girls, the faces tend to be more rounded and the chin is higher up, making the face appear shorter. I also mentioned the ears here. The way Implix stylizes them is to draw a rather rounded shape with two shadow shapes within, as well as a shadow outline at the outer edge. The nose is portrayed with a simple line which includes two changes of direction for three quarter or side views. Often a shadow or light is on it. Mouths are drawn using a line as well, which often, especially when the mouth is open, can be thicker. For open mouths, the artist often shows teeth by using a white shape with two more pointy defined teeth on the outer sides. Under the mouth, an indication of the lips is portrayed with a small shadow sometimes. For eyebrows, Implik either draws them as one simple outline shape, or they use no outline and include smaller individual hairs transitioning into a full shape. And when it comes to hair that's over the eyebrows, it covers them completely, which is the same for the eyes. The next feature I'll talk about. First, I'm focusing on the outlines and shapes of the eye. This is what you would focus on during the sketching or line art phase. The wide slanted rectangle, or the mathematical term would be parallelogram, is used as the overall shape. You can really see how the upper and lower, as well as the inner and outer eye lines, are almost parallel. For some illustrations, Implik also makes this shape more rounded to fit the character. In the side view, the eye is portrayed as a triangular shape. For female characters, the eyes tend to be taller and more rounded. The eye only has one longer lash at the top outer corner most of the time. For some illustrations, and mostly for female characters, some smaller lashes are also added around the eye. The overall thickness of the eyelash increases from the lower inner side to the top outer side. And a few characters also have a empty space in the eye outline at the bottom outer corner of the eye. More sketchy lines with varying opacity are also used to portray the inner side transitioning into the full eyelash. This can also be the case for the lower eyelash, which often has a very thin line underneath. This gives the eyes a bit more depth, even for the full lower eyelash. Next up are lines around the eye. 
for portraying the eyelid, one long line above the eyes is used, which follows the eye shape. Now moving on to the colors of the eyes and what's important when you're shading. First of all, the iris has a circular rounded shape, it is rather small. It often has just one color, but sometimes there's a small shadow underneath the eyelid. The pupil within the iris often is a pretty small dot, but for drawing Luan, for example, the pupil has a long thin shape. Inplik doesn't always draw highlights on the eyes, which also makes the characters appear less cute and young, but when they do, it's a small highlight dot above the iris. And finally, for the white of the eye, sometimes a small shadow that's cast from the eyelash is drawn in. Now for all other shading on the face I haven't mentioned yet. In some illustrations, a small shadow is drawn in above the upper eyeline, blush underneath the eyes and in some illustrations on the nose is also added often. The redness around the eyes and the different texture of the line art often draws some attention to them here. The eyes are pretty much the only place where sketchy lines are used. Now we're moving on to hair, another aspect that can be very unique to each artist. As I mentioned when talking about the lines and plick draws, the hair outline is very focused on the silhouette, inner lines are only rarely drawn in. For this artist, I found looking at one shape strand and repeating this shape for the rest of the hairstyle helps with understanding the overall hairstyle. The hair often has a texture this way, being rather sharp or more fluffy, for example. So for shading the hair, clear shadow shapes that are sometimes outlined, also with colors, are used. They tend to be rather triangular and follow the direction of the hair around the head from its hair growth spot or line. The shadow shapes can have varying opacity, you could simplify this into one or two levels of shading. In a few illustrations, some shadow shapes are also colored. Something I found interesting here was that the hair silhouette and lines can have very rounded shapes, while the shading is pretty sharp and triangular. Finally, Implic mostly doesn't draw highlights on the hair. I just saw them in this one illustration and here they are made up of colored zigzag shapes. Next, let's talk about the outfits Implic draws. They consist of modern outfits with clothing pieces like t-shirts and jackets, Many times they're also oversized, clothes are also drawn in with bigger shapes and rather straight lines most of the time. Folds are portrayed through shading mostly, I'll talk more about this after the next aspect which would be the colors and palettes in Inplix illustrations. For this I found basically two coloring schemes. For once we'd have the mostly black and white, slightly darker color schemes. The skin has a pinkish color and is saturated. This makes it stand out in these illustrations. Shadow outlines and the iris colors can also be saturated using neon colors which draws in some attention and makes the art look more interesting and unique. In some of these illustrations a monochrome color scheme is also applied, for example with red or blue being main colors other than skin and black and white. The second coloring scheme is a neon pink bright one which can include a lot of different colors combining more and less saturated ones. The colors in Inplex art have a rather pinkish or bluish undertone. Overall, the colors also tend to be more desaturated and pastel-y. The art has not that much contrast and a bit of a lo-fi aesthetic to it because of this. Moving on to shading. This really stands out for this artist to me. Inplik uses cell shading made up of clear shapes, which have a triangular or rectangular shape most of the time. In some illustrations, these shapes have a slight transition or texture to them. An outline around the clothes or in other shading is sometimes used as well. This can either be slightly darker or brighter than the shadow color or in a neon color, mostly blue, purple or pink. What I could see from their speed paint video on their YouTube channel was that they don't use the lasso selection tool to select these shapes but paint them in themselves. The brush they used for this has slight varying opacity at the start and end of the brush strokes. When looking at the overall brightness of areas in Inplex Art, you could simplify it into three levels in many illustrations. In this collaboration illustration with Ensemble Stars, which made me really happy to see since I like the Phantom a lot, a lighting layer is also added, something I haven't seen in any of Inplex other illustrations. The final aspect I mention in this analysis part will be the extra effects and what stands out. First, I mentioned the many small aesthetic accessoires and stickers that are especially used in the pink bright illustrations. Logos and other graphic design elements are also used sometimes. The outfits of characters and backgrounds really stand out in Inplex illustrations to me because of this. From watching their speed paint, I saw they draw some of the accessoires in themselves. For logos and patterns, they also import images. Now we move on to the next part of studying Inplex art, drawing in their art style. I'll talk about my experience while drawing as well as how I applied what I found out in my study. I wanted to challenge myself by creating an illustration very similar to one of theirs. Like this, I could easily compare the artworks to see the differences from my study and their art. Because of this, I decided to draw a full body illustration of Luguan that would match up with this one illustration of Cheng Xiao. We start with the sketching phase. For the pose, I used one of my pose studies from my daily drawings. I had to adjust the proportions a bit though, making the legs a lot longer. I was focusing on getting a nice looking face shape, but found this a bit difficult since I usually draw more rounded faces with smaller jaws. But overall, the sketching phase here was pretty easy compared to the other ones, since I didn't have to draw in a lot of folds and hair strands because they would be defined by the shading later on. I used the app PureRef to make sure my proportions were lining up with Inplix. I had an overview window of my illustration next to the illustration of 
Ciao. Now on to the line art. This was pretty challenging to me. At first I wanted to make sure I would use a brush that would get a similar line thickness and texture. My usual line art brush has a bit of a sketchy texture but for Implic their lines are pretty clean and sharp. The brush I ended up using was a basic round brush with slight variation in opacity and line thickness. In full body illustrations lines will often be a bit thicker on the face for example than for a portrait illustration. After I was done with the line art I noticed my lines turned out a bit thin. I painted over them a bit to adjust this. The close Implic draws can have a pretty blocky shape look with more straight lines than what I would usually use so the clothes were a bit difficult to draw for me here. The most challenging part for the line art were the shoes though. I didn't have the best references for them, I just looked at some other illustrations and tried to replicate what I saw there. They probably also were a bit difficult to draw since I haven't drawn many shoes over the last weeks. After the line art it was time for filling in flat colors. While I at first tried to fill in the colors by looking at the illustrations and going with what I saw to test my observation skills, in the end I color picked from Implix illustrations to make sure the colors would match for my illustration. I noticed how many different colors Implic uses. Their shading can have a bit of a holographic look this way. All colors still are pretty bright and neon-like though, except for the black parts of the outfit. Next, let's move on to the shading. For the shading colors I used, I at first tried to find what colors I would have to use in a multiply blending mode, since I normally use multiply layers to shade my drawings. For the skin, this multiply color would be a light gray for example, while I would usually use a pastel orange or red. However, figuring out shading colors like this was pretty confusing, and since I saw that in Implic speed paint on their YouTube channel, they didn't seem to use blending modes for shading. They picked a color and painted in the shadows with that color. It didn't appear different from what they had in the color picker, so I decided to just use the normal layer blending mode and color pick the shadow colors. They often wear a pretty desaturated, slightly darker color than the original color with some hue variation which often was more purpley or bluish. The skin and face shading were pretty easy to me here since it was just lasso selecting areas and painting in parts with the airbrush. With shading the other parts I struggled a lot with finding nice triangular or blocky shapes to fill in with different colors. I usually would only follow the close directions for drawing folds, I also tend to make them more rounded often. What I found helpful to make sure I used good shapes for portraying the shadows here was to for one take into consideration the light source and direction and then pay attention to the shapes that they would have different sizes, angles and colors as well as that they would portray folds this means they would still often follow the close direction in some way. For drawing the shadow shapes I used Implix Art as reference. Other than the triangular shadow shapes they often draw in these small long rectangles and I found a nice marker brush to paint these in. And I saw Implix illustration also has a dog in it. This seems to be like Cheng Zhao's pet and well to make my illustration really match to Implix I also wanted to include Lu Guang's animal a cat. Well, cats are probably the animal I've drawn most other than horses as a child. I haven't drawn animals in a long time so it was a bit difficult to me. Pinterest and Implix art were a big help to me here. Finally we move on to the background. A big challenge to me since I usually don't draw as detailed backgrounds as here but I really liked how it looked so I wanted to replicate it to also get inspired for my future art. At first I broke it down into different elements included in there. The sky, stars, rigging, time gears, clouds in the back and in the front as well as patterns like flowers. Then I added in the different parts. For the stars as well as the patterns I also imported images, whereas for the rings and the clouds I painted them in myself. I really like the many different colors included in the background and am amazed by how Implic uses them. I also like the elements theme-wise, clouds, a night sky, sparkles, stars and flowers. These are all elements I could see myself including in my own art in the future. And that would be it for this illustration. Drawing this was really challenging, it all took me 13 hours. And here are the differences I see between their art and my art. The hands turned out a bit thin and small in my illustration. On the pants you could see the shading looks softer, it transitions more into the line art, whereas for my illustration the line art and shading look pretty separated. The folds on the pants also look less realistic and believable. Lu Guang's face also looks less expressive. I partly wanted this since Lu Guang is not as outgoing as Sheng Shao. But still, if Implic drew him, I think they would have given him a nicer expression. The hair might also have a bit too much volume. Then I added in outlines around the black shadow shapes, like for the white shirt in Implix illustration, which isn't something I would see them doing necessarily, but the shirt looked a bit too plain to me, so I went with this. The background also has a lot of differences. The sizes and looks of the objects in there are a bit different. Here are some things I realized I really want to improve on or be inspired by from drawing this. I want to use more various colors in my own art and shading. Then I want to include more complex backgrounds with elements in them, I especially like stars and clouds for example. After having drawn Lu Guang in the art style, basically trying to replicate it very similarly, I was also thinking about drawing one of my characters in their style, since this would lead to me having to stylize my own character. Since I like to challenge myself and I've never regretted doing an additional art piece, I decided to go for it. I wanted this illustration to be different from the first one, which is why I went with a bright theme and I was inspired by this one Lego candy themed illustration. In my previous art style analysis videos, I've drawn my black haired OC, and here I wanted to do this again, but for all these illustrations, the character in Plick Draws usually have white 
hair and a white outfit. Because of this, I decided to make two versions, one with a black hair and shirt and one with white hair and shirt. I also decided to add some hair strands for the white hair version so that it would replicate another one of my OCs, Yumari. He's a character based on the moon and I noticed that both my black hair OC and him have pretty similar eye shapes and hairstyles. Because of this, changing up the colors worked to make the characters resemble each one of them. For the outfit, I used my first OC's one but adjusted the belts, making them bigger as well as the shirt looser to make it fit more into Inplix's aesthetic. First, the body and hair volume were way too small while the head was too big. I also was struggling quite a bit with the eyes, the face shape and the placement of the nose and I wanted my character to hold their phone. My black hat OC likes tech a lot and always has his phone with him so this fit nicely to me. Sketching and line arting all the accessoires took a pretty long time and after this was done I filled in flat colors at first trying to pick the right colors myself but then color picking from the art as reference. For this illustration doing the shading was difficult again since in the reference here Inplik didn't use many triangular shapes and sometimes even included more painterly strokes. I wanted to go for some painterly strokes which is also similar to how I shade my drawings. I often didn't use the lasso tool to select shadow shapes like I did in the first illustration. The hands were quite difficult to draw here. I used Implix art as references again. I focused on each individual color and looked at how Implix would shade elements in there. The holographic look, especially for the electronic devices and belts, stood out to me a lot here. This illustration doesn't have as much contrast, so I sometimes was unsure about shadow colors. They seemed very bright. Something I also paid attention to was to add depth to the belts through smaller lines and shading. This is something I also want to do in my own art. It makes the clothes appear more believable. Something that's stood out to me was that not all elements are shaded, for example contact shadows when a accessoire would be on top of the arm for example, were only used rarely. As I was drawing I also made notes on things I would still want to do later on, then I finally moved on to the background. Yeah, I basically only used a lot of PNGs I had downloaded and added some text. For the variations with colors, I put a black layer on dark mode at 21% opacity as well as a duplicated copy of it as a burn layer at 31% opacity above my hair and color layer. I also had this filter mask applied to it. And that would be it for the process of drawing my OCs in Implix style. Here the face shape, level of detail for rendering for the clothes, hands and accessoires as well as the hair shading are the biggest differences to Implix art to me. The perspective here also looks more like it's from slightly below. From this illustration I learned that I really want to improve on the level of detail for rendering the clothes in my own art. And similar to with all the backgrounds element in the previous illustration, how much accessoires and a nice background can add to an illustration. And that's it for my style study of Implix. Here are the main things I learned from this study and what I personally want to be inspired by. Drawing the background for Lu Guang's illustration was very tedious and time consuming. For the future it would be best to have elements already prepared like time gears, stars and so on to import into your own illustration files. You can also make use of your drawing programs features for creating patterns or elements here. Implic used Clip Studio Paint and I have the program as well. I use Krita to draw my illustrations though. I know there are pattern brushes and a big image and material library in Clip Studio Paint. You could probably recreate a lot of the elements I created manually or use downloaded PNGs. Next thing is that you can get away with using a lot of different colors in your illustration when they're all in a similar pastel or neon tone. It's good to combine these colors with black and white, they unify them. During the study I also noticed how much I really like pink, purpley and bluish colors. That's also why I like the colors in Implix art a lot and want to take inspiration from them. The final thing is that it's good to take inspiration from different aesthetics like Vaporwave or Kitquad to add accessoires. You can pick an aesthetic you like here, it makes the art look more interesting. Finally, I also was really motivated to draw Lu Gong and Zheng Xiao in my own art style. I'm also making stickers out of these, for which I'm leaving a link in the video description. After having done my first analysis video, I realized that I like learning from artists I look up to a lot, but whenever I get really invested in a topic, I tend to think about all possible ways I could approach it. That's why today's video is rather long. I included trace over breakdown sketches, basic faces in the art style, an eye tutorial, drawing their own character in their art style while trying to replicate it as much as possible, as well as drawing my own character in Netflix art style, applying what I learned from my studies when stylizing my character. This all took a really long time, but it was a good experience to learn for future analyses. It challenged me and got me to think more about how I want to do illustrations in the future as well. Which part of this video did you find most interesting and helpful? How would you like to learn from artists, focusing more on simple breakdowns of their art, drawing tutorial like guides of the art style, or full illustrations inspired by their art style? Let me know in the comments. You can also tell me about other art styles or artists you would like to see me break down in the future. I like doing these videos along with my project-based ones to learn something new and get inspired by art styles and artists I like, so I might do more videos like these in the future. I hope this video was helpful and inspiring to you. Check out Inplix Art if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and bye.